Hey guys, my name is Hiroko Murakami, back with another video with No Edge Academics. Today we'll be continuing with topic C3, Wave Phenomena, Part 3. Now this is an agent only topic, uh, so if you're an SL, you do not need to watch this video, okay? So up until last video, we've talked about double slit interference, the importance of double slit interference, about how constructive interference and destructive interference happens, and also using path difference to qualify whether at one point there was constructive or destructive interference happening. Now this video adds on top of that. So if you do not understand those basic concepts, this video is going to be really confusing. So you need to rewatch that video before you come back here. Okay. So up until last time we covered here. So constructive interference that happens when path difference is a multiple of Lambda. And we even did a past paper problem of that, right? Same thing, destructive interference path difference is N plus one over two times Lambda. This is something we covered to last video path difference for HO goes one more step mathematically, which is equating that to D sine theta. So now we're getting a relationship with the slit separation, which is D. Now, how does this mathematically work? Well, if I assume this line and this line to be completely parallel, so you can see on this diagram, completely parallel, then trigonometrically speaking, this path difference that we've talked about is going to be equal to D sine theta. Right, because the hypotenuse is d, the angle is theta, so this is going to be d times sine theta. That's just how trigonometry works, right? So I can equate d sine theta, which is equal to path difference, to now n times lambda or n plus 1 over 2 times lambda. Okay, so let's do a practice problem just to um, you know get a grip of what this equation looks like. So pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, so they're telling us we want the the smallest angle for which the two ratio interfere destructively. Okay, so first of all, this is destructive interference. So we are not considering this one, we are considering this one, right? We want destructive interference. And we also want the first smallest angle. So that happens when n is equal to zero, right? So the d sine theta, that's gonna be equal to zero plus one over two lambda. So this is the answer and that's A, okay? Now, if they told me the, let's say the, the second smallest angle, then I would set N equals one and the answer would become C suddenly. Okay, so read the question carefully and understand what this N is. I've already covered this in the last video. So if you're not sure, just go and rewatch the last bit of the last video, okay? So now that we've covered path difference, let me talk about single slit diffraction. So we've covered two slit, double slit interference and double slit diffraction. What if I just make it single slit? Will we still observe interference pattern? Because the whole point of double slit interference was that there's two wave sources, one and two, and then the waves from each of them, they overlap with each other. And where they overlap with each other, that's where we have constructive interference. And where they uh, overlap with each other in a way that one is max, one is minimum, that's where we have destructive interference. That's why we observed this pattern of this thing, right? That was the whole point where n is equal to zero, n equals one, n equals two. I hope you remember that, right? So, okay, but if I just have one slit where I have this kind of diffraction, do I still get that, right? Un very unlikely, right? Theoretically speaking, that shouldn't be happening, okay? Because now you don't have those two sources overlapping each other and causing that interference. You only have one, right? So you would expect instead to see a straight line as an intensity. Intensity is constant, right? So I'm gonna show it here. So what we expect is a constant intensity. We don't have this, this wave-like pattern anymore, right? But here's the thing. In the experiment, when we did a single slit diffraction, this is what we saw. We saw something like this. Okay, and you might be wondering like what, how do we have a maximum, how do we have a minimum and maximum minimum again? This looks exactly like double slit, but there's a slight difference, which is that it curves down. It curves down. It doesn't stay the same brightness. Okay, so it curves down and it's also like much wider. Okay, and you might be saying, okay, why is that happening? What's the logic behind it? Because you know, if you don't understand the logic behind these things, then you get really confused. So let's walk down on the logic. So the logic behind this is that we treat this single slit like a multi-slit. 
Like there's a ton of waste sources. In fact, there's infinite amount of them. Okay? Now hang on with me, right? Because now we're getting to the math part. And the math part is really important in order to answer questions. Okay, if there's multiple slits, then, okay, well, let's apply the same logic. There has to be an angle at which we get constructive interference if I treat, let's say, this guy and this guy to be two sources, right? That happens when the path difference, in this case, by the way, it's not d sine theta, it's b sine theta because hypotenuse is b, right? So when the path difference is equal to n times lambda, we should expect constructive interference between these two wave wavelets, wave points. We call these wavelets. These are like smaller waves, okay? Same way like piglets, right? But wavelets, okay? So these two points right now at this perfect angle where you have path difference is equal to n times lambda, this is when you have a constructive interference. But halfway through, let's say I compare this guy and the halfway through, okay, same thing, parallel. Now the path difference here, that's b over 2 sine theta, which is equal to n over 2 times lambda. And that's destructive interference, okay? In fact, if I take another pair, let's say here and here, that also has the same path difference, and that's going to be destructive interference. Again, this guy and this guy, destructive interference. Another one, this guy and this guy, destructive interference. In fact, I can make an infinite amount of combinations. So here and here, here and here, here and here, here and here. I can go infinite amount. So essentially, when I add all of those up together, what do I get? I get an infinite amount of destructive interference and one constructive interference at the edge. So if I add those two up together, I actually get a destructive interference. Okay, so I get destructive interference when B sine theta is equal to lambda. I'm setting n is equal to one here. I'm, to, I'm looking at the first observable point. Okay, so I get destructive happens when B sine theta is equal to lambda. Now, one math property that you might have not known about sine is that when the angle is small, sine theta is roughly the same as theta. And so if I use this expression, then I can simplify this to B times theta is equal to lambda, or rearranging this, theta is equal to lambda over B. And so this theta is really important because this is the angle to the first minima. This is when the destructive interference happens in single slit uh, interference. Okay, so it will, look, it will look like this. So the first point of minima is when theta is equal to lambda over b. Okay, and then the second one is two times lambda over b. The third one is three times lambda over b. Okay, and we call this weird looking pattern a single slit interference pattern or single slit modulation. So I know it's a bit confusing of why that happens. At best, you understand everything. At worst, you don't understand the logic behind it, but you understand the math behind it. And you memorize the math behind it. And you're able to solve problems using that logic. So let's do a practice problem. So pause the video and give this one a try. So part A, we want to calculate the angle at which the first minimum of the diffraction pattern is formed. Well, that happens when theta is equal to lambda over b, right? So that's 663. Okay, this is in radians, by the way. The unit is in radians. Part B, if the pattern is observed on the screen that is 2.83 meters from the slit, so that's 2.83, determine the width of the central maximum. I want to find the width here. Okay, that's where the, that's where the, this thing happens, right? So I want to find the width of that. How do I find the width of that? Well, I use trigonometry. So this here, that's what? It's 2.83 tan theta, right? So if I double it, I get the full thing. So the width zero point zero five meters. Okay. Now I want you to be careful because this is in radian. So if you're uh, calculator setting is in degrees, you're not going to get the right answer. So make sure it's in radians, okay? All right, so we've covered now single slit on its own. 
And you might be saying, okay, but we've ignored this before when we did double slit. So can we just continue ignoring it? And the answer is no, because in real life, this effect of double slit interference between two wave sources and single slit interference, which is the effect of each slit, they basically combine each other, okay? And what do I mean by that? Well, I'll show you in a second. So when I consider only double slit interference, this was how we saw it. That was the interference pattern. But now if I add the single slit pattern, it looks like this, right? So how do I combine these two effects together? Well, it looks like this, okay? So first the purple line, that's the double slit interference on its own. The dotted blue line, that's the single slit interference on its own. And then the red line is the combination of it. In fact, this is what we see in our real world experiment. So you see in this one, the, the uh, Young's double slit experiment. What I didn't tell you before is this picture. And the reason why I didn't want to show it to you is because, well, we have constructive, destructive, constructive, destructive, constructive, destructive. That's something we already know. But then what we didn't know is the effect of single slit where the inter intensity goes down. And also there is a, uh, missing peak here, missing peak here, for some reason. This guy is completely eradicated, right? These guys are completely eradicated. So I didn't want to show this picture before because I thought it would create confusion. But now I'm giving you the actual result of the experiment, and you can see that it's the combination between each individual slit's effect, which is due to B, and the double slit effect where you have two sources combining with each other. Okay, so now here becomes the really important question, which is how can I manipulate this whole thing to look somewhat differently? What are the parameters I can control and what does that affect? So first let's take a look at theta is equal to lambda over B. We also have sine theta is equal to N lambda over D, right? So those are the two competing effects. So if I make, let's say B smaller, then what happens to theta? The theta becomes bigger. What does that mean? Well, this dotted line, this dotted line we have is going to get wider, right? It's going to get wider, maybe something like this, maybe something like this, right? Now, when that happens, the intensity pattern in the middle becomes like that and just keeps going like that. So the, the whole thing changes, the whole thing changes, right? Okay, how about I don't touch this, and I change D. What if I decrease D? Well, what happens? Sine theta, which is the angle, increases, right? So what does that mean? Well, that means this whole purple thing that we have, that's going to get wider, okay? Because the, the angle of the bright fringe increases. So maybe it looks a bit fatter like this, and it's going to shift everything. right? So those are the two competing effects. So you're going to get a combination of these. And the reason why I'm explaining to you all of these is so that you don't get scared when you see the first problem, the picture in your exam question, you're like, oh my God, what is going on? This looks so bizarre to me. Okay. I don't want you to freak out. I want you to dissect this. This guy is due to double slit. This guy is due to single slit. So affecting D will change the pattern of this guy. Affecting B will only change the pattern of this guy. They are independent from each other. And so you can use that information to process the questions, okay? Now, one more thing that I wanted to say is that one really popular paper one question is, they ask you, what if the, the slit width is negligible? Meaning it's closer to zero. It's like almost zero. Well, that means that the angle is infinitely high. Well, that means that this single slit modulation the angle to the this guy is infinite. So it goes until like that, right? It's like infinitely wide, which means intensity actually doesn't drop because if angle is infinite, then the intensity doesn't drop. So what you're gonna see when the slit width is negligible, this is what happens in double slit interference. Okay, this is a very popular paper one question. So don't get tricked, please. Okay, so let's do a practice problem. So this is a past paper problem. So 
this is a level of difficulty you should expect in your exam. Um, and the reason why I spent so much time on this single and double slit uh, interference is because I didn't want you to get confused when you saw this diagram. This looks very intimidating, right? Now, before I tell you to pause the video and give this one a try, there is one missing information from part A of this because I'm starting from C, which is that the, the slit width D is equal to this, okay? So now pause the video and give this one a try. So we see this is actually the uh, implementation of this question. So we actually already have lambda. We also have D. And we have actually half of S. This is half of S because they gave us the distance between the bright and the dark fringe. But then S is bright and bright fringe. So here they are telling us 4.5. That means this is S, which is double. Okay, so S is this. So let's solve for D. Okay, so D is 4.27 meters. Part D. Okay, so we want the angular separation, but first let's get the actual separation between them. So we already know that S is equal to nine millimeter, right? That's from the previous part. The missing peak, there is like a missing peak. It's supposed to be like that, right? So that's how many S's? That's one, two, three, four. So four S is gonna be this, right? So now it's actually just trick because the distance from here to here is 36 millimeter. And I actually already know the distance to the screen. So it looks like four point two seven meters from last question. So what's the angle? You should get You should get this as your final answer, okay? And the last part, did you see millimeter the width of one slit? Okay, the width of one slit, that's B. We're solving for B. Okay, or you can leave it in millimeters, which is this. All right, that's the answer. So this is kind of the expected level of uh, IB pass paper. So I hope you got the same thing and uh, you understood everything perfectly. Okay, uh, next video, we're going to cover multi-slit diffraction and diffraction grading. Now, if you did find doing pass paper problem very useful, then leave it down in the comments below if you want more of these kind of problems. Okay, uh, I might make a separate video on just speed running paper one and paper two uh, separately. Uh, and doing passport problems so you can see the level of difficulty and if you understand all of them So leave it down below make sure you like and subscribe and everything and help us with the engagement Okay, so we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys. Thanks for watching If you like this kind of video then consider giving us a like and subscribing to our channel We have a lot more lecture style video and content like this in our channel So feel free to go check it out uh, If you're looking for additional guidances like one-on-one -on -one tutors and IV subjects SAT, TOK essay, IA's writing, etc. Then uh, go to our website at novaedgeacademics.com, fill out the form, and we'll get in touch with us. In the meantime, we'll see you in the next video.